Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. This episode is for you lazy folk out there who don't pull start your paramotor. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to undo the two bolts that hold the back cap in. Mine are a couple of 8 mils, and these are long screws that run the full length of this starter motor. Now, the reason I'm servicing my starter motor is mainly because it was a little bit sluggish starting when I first got the paramotor. That was probably mostly down to battery, but seeing as I've got the whole thing apart, it makes sense just to take everything apart and then make sure it's clean and running so I don't have to do this down the road. I can just keep on flying and not worry about it. And it's got a pull start as well, so even if this doesn't work, at least I can pull start the engine. Now, with that off, you should be able to pull this back cap off. It's probably gonna be ever so slightly stiff, so just work it off with your hand, like so. That shows you all of your brushes and the solenoid inside. So, as you take this apart, carefully take bits out and make sure you can see where they go. And um, There's no point in rushing this, because otherwise you'll lose bits. Once you've taken this end cap off, you should be able to pull this front piece off now, and it should come out like that. So a couple of main reasons why these start motors go bad is because this contact point at the top here gets all clogged up and then these brushes on here also wear down so you aren't getting a good contact between the two. For the most part on power motors, you'll probably find that these little pieces in here which are called your brushes are probably gonna be all right. They're not getting as heavy uses like a car does or a motorbike does because let's face it, most of us are taking our power motors out on the weekend. So if these brushes are worn down to a nub and fallen out of these cases, you can replace them. You'll just need to snip off this copper wire here and resolder on a new brush. A crude way to check the life of these brushes, if you don't have the specs with you, is to push them back into their holder and then look into the gap to see how far they've worn down. Considering there's quite a lot of material poking out the end here, I'm pretty happy with that. And all I'll need to do this time is clean up these plates. So as you can see, this top piece up here is currently black. We need to remove all of that crap off of there and return it back to the copper color it should be. Cleaning this all up in turn will create a better connection between it and the brushes when it's spinning round. There's several ways to clean this up. I'm gonna use a brass brush. Don't put too much pressure on this because you don't wanna wear away the copper itself. You just wanna take off that carbon surface. I say use a brass brush because if you use a steel brush, you're in danger of taking away too much material. So gently go over the surface until you can see copper again. Once you're happy that you've cleaned up these contacts, take a cloth and wipe off any dust that you've created from doing so. Depending on how dusty or corroded your starter is, you may need to use a spray just to get everything off. Whilst we've got this in our hand, it's worth checking this piece at the front here. If these teeth are too far gone, you'll need to replace this bit. On this starter motor, there's a nut at the front here, you can undo that and then remove that piece. Currently I do have an o-ring underneath this bushing that is perished, but I'm gonna do that once it's back on the power motor so I can lock this gear into place and then use a spanner to take this nut off. Now that we're done with that, we can set that aside and then clean up our main casing. As your armature spins around inside your start motor, it makes contact with these brushes, and as you probably guessed, they wear down and they leave a coppery carbon dust. Of which, this one isn't too bad, but it can get to a state where it's absolutely caked on inside here. For demonstration purposes, it's all black carbony stuff like this that will come out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some intake cleaner inside there, just to clean off what little is inside there, and just make sure this is as best as it can possibly be. You can also clean the faces of these brushes as well, but it's not really that necessary because these faces wear down and they've usually got a pretty clean surface. As you can see, this water is pretty black and dark from all the carbon. Obviously, if you're doing this maintenance in your kitchen, make sure you put down some newspaper before you start doing this. Now all you'll need to do is just try and get in there with a cloth and just clean this out. Sometimes you'll be able to remove this plate with all these brushes on. Mine's held in with a pop rivet, so I'm not about to drill that out. I'm gonna clean this up as best I can, let it dry, and whilst it's doing that, I'm gonna clean this cap out, and then we can put it all back together again. As you can see from this, there's plenty of carbon in there. And one final check that's worth doing is making sure that your bearing isn't binding or grinding inside this unit. There's also another one at the end there, 
which you can check as well. So to put this back together, take your armature and then place it into the sleeve. These are magnets, so it might pull it out a little bit. Now you're at this point, you're gonna to have to push these brushes in so your bearing can fit past them. There you go. Now you want the armature itself to go past. With a little bit of finessing, you should be able to get your armature back between these brushes. Most of the time they've only got two. This one's got four, which made it pretty damn awkward. But if you're Vishnu, you're probably going to be all right. So let's close the casing back up and then get the cap back on. Before you put the cap back on, make sure everything's spinning as it should. Usually these will have an indicator of which way around this cap should go, but it's quite easy to tell if you line up the two holes on the back here with the two holes that go straight through the start motor. So place the cap back on and then put your bolts in. Thanks for watching this video guys, hopefully you found it helpful and if you've liked it let me know by giving it a thumbs up, if you loved it subscribe and as always I'll see you up in the air.